Hello, I am Dr. Sanjeev. I am a senior pediatrician in Cloud9 Hospital, Electronic City, Bangalore. Vitamin D deficiency, which in children we call it as rickets, in adults we call it as osteomalacia, is one of the commonest vitamin deficiencies we come across nowadays. With the facilities to investigate, the child have given us early diagnosis of vitamin D deficiency which we call it as biochemical rickets and what that basically means that the serum vitamin D3 levels are low even before they manifest clinically. But of late what we are seeing is because of the lockdown, because of different issues, too much of clothing, not going out in sun and playing and in general the dark skin of the Indian people doesn't allow the vitamin D to be synthesized in the skin with the help of the sunlight. So majority of the children nowadays we are seeing they show some other symptoms of vitamin D deficiency and as per the recommendations of different scientific organizations all the newborns till the age of one year are supplemented with vitamin D so that vitamin D helps in making their bones and their teeth strong. This is one of the physical aspect but vitamin D itself has multiple roles in the human body. It almost acts like a right from building block helping to it helps as a hormone as well. So vitamin D efficiency usually in small children manifests in the form of excessive sweating on the forehead. The child may have a lot of sweating even the pillows sometimes where they are sleeping on that can get moist a bit. They have delayed dentition. These are the frontal areas, these are the parietal areas, they will see bossing of these heads. Some of these children will have so called the hot cross bun appearance of the head. The head looks little big and there are a lot of sweating on that head and the fontanelles, the sutures, they are a bit open. These children have delayed dentition as I have already mentioned. They will have soft bones. Some of these children can have a sulcus on the chest which is also called as a Harrison sulcus. They have because of the soft ribs, they may have a protuberant abdomen, they may have wide wrists, they may have wide ankles. If the child is walking, they will have a wide ankle, we also call it as a double malleoli or they can have a wide wrist and they can have bowing of the legs. They can have a bowing whereby it, the knees they look apart and the child walks as if he has bowed legs or they can have knock knees whereby the knees are touching each other when they are walking and these are basically because of the soft long bones which bend and this is because of vitamin D deficiency, softer bones they bend easily when they are weight bearing and they give these such structural changes to the child. The best way of prevention is the child should be playing in sunlight, should be having adequate calcium containing food. So all the cereals, particularly ragi is a very rich source of nutrition for the baby. The best calcium that comes to the baby is through the mother's milk, exclusive breastfeeding up to the age of 6 months, thereafter continuing breastfeeding till the baby is 2 years and beyond. Along with that a proper complementary feeding in the form of homemade food gruels which contains lot of calcium in the form of ragi sari or any other thing can be offered to the baby. The people who eat on which usually they will get lot of calcium once the baby is one year old and beyond when they start giving baby the animal proteins. Sunlight is very important so all the children should be exposed to sun. They should play out, they should not be sitting inside the house, they should be encouraged to go outside in the sunlight, particularly the morning sun is very important for synthesis of vitamin D, they should be encouraged to go out and play in the sunlight. These are the simple things you should do and anytime if you feel that your child is having these symptoms in the form of bowing of the legs, wide wrists, recurrent infections, a little bigger like looking head. The whole of the head is not fusing till the baby, although the baby is beyond one and a half years of age. These are the things that should guide you to go to a doctor as early as possible to seek advice regarding vitamin D supplementation.